Hello, I'm Bruce Shaney, and today in Homemade Science, we're going to take a look at some of the basics of axe throwing. And I also want to show you a modification that I made that makes it a little bit more interesting. Now, before I get started, I do want to mention about safety. Uh, it is important to have adult supervision. Uh, these could be dangerous weapons, so we need a safe place to throw. No people, no other things around that could get damaged. Eyeglasses are always a good idea. And once again, some good instructions on how to throw would also be helpful. Now, my personal preference is I like to throw with one arm, left-handed. Now, of course, the idea is that you're going to throw the axe with the blade facing the target. It's going to do one revolution and then hopefully stick in the target. Now, in throwing an axe, one of the first things you learn very quickly is that the distance away from the target is very important. These markers represent the area for planting my front foot. With my foot at the front end of this marker. Now if I throw with my foot towards the back end of the line. I barely caught the target with the toe of the axe. So the angle of the axe to the target is an easy way to judge the correct distance. If I'm too close, the axe doesn't have time to do one full rotation. Sometimes I do get lucky and get a bounce stick. This is where the knob strikes the target first, but the axe continues to rotate enough that it sticks in the target. And if I'm back too far, the axe will keep rotating and hit on the head or even the backside. Now for a single revolution, my marker starts at 11 feet. For two revolutions, I back up with my marker starting at 22 feet. And for three revolutions, my marker starts at 33 feet. Let's see if I can hit the target. Well, that wasn't the target I was aiming for, but I'll take it. Now on the way to the target, this axe is actually rotating around the center of its mass. And if I balance it, I find it's somewhere around right here. We can put a red mark there. And the axe actually rotates around that position. So if I throw it, it's a little bit easier to see in slow motion. Here's a position of the axe every 12th second. Now I'll throw this pool ball the same way and then we'll compare them. Do you see the similarities? The yellow marks show us that the ball is decelerating due to gravity, and the red marks show us that the ball is accelerating as the ball falls. We see the same behavior with the axe. Both objects have an acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared. Chasing out the path, we see that the ball follows a parabolic curve. Tracing out the axe's center of mass, we see that we get the same path. Now how fast or slow I throw the axe doesn't matter. I can throw it slowly, or I can throw it much quicker. Now once again, if we look at the center of mass of the thrown axe, we see that same acceleration due to gravity. Throwing a ball at the target, we see a similar behavior. If we measure off its horizontal movement, it indicates that its forward motion is fairly constant. The same is true for the axe. It's a combination of these two movements that give the parabolic curve. Throwing the axe faster simply gives us less of a slope. Once again, the same behavior just extended over a longer distance. I have several axes that require to be thrown at different distances. This first one has a center of mass more towards the middle it's about right there, which means it's going to rotate faster. So I'll have to be a little bit closer to the target. A little bit heavier. The center of mass is 
more towards the head. I'll step back a step. The same axe head on a shorter handle has its center of mass located right here. Longer handle moves its center of mass onto the handle itself located about right here. Now let's take a look at the difference. Shorter handle, faster rotation. For the second axe, I need to move back about six feet. Now, after I started hitting the target fairly consistently, I started looking for other challenges. So throwing with both hands at once became a challenge. Now when we look at this axe and a lot of the marks in this target, we can see that they're on a slight angle. I think that might be due to a little bit of arthritis that I have in my shoulder. After throwing for a while, my shoulder does get tender, so I have been practicing some other techniques. I found that I can throw it sidearm. Now what's becoming one of my favorite ways of throwing is underhand. It actually feels like pitching horseshoes or maybe bowling. The path is the same type as we saw before. Now, as I learned more about throwing axes and tomahawks, I started wondering a little bit more about that limited distance that you had to be away from a target for this to become an effective weapon. I figured it was the bit length that was actually limiting the angle that the axe can stick. As I learned more about all the variations of axes, I thought the battle axe offered an interesting alternative. So the idea was to extend the blade all the way around the handle, and this is what I came up with. I extended the bit all the way around the handle. I tried a few different versions to see how they would work. As a throwing axe, it works really well. It just about tripled the foot placement area. Looks like I could go back even further. Now both of these are extremely easy to throw. Now let's see if I can do three rotations. Now I did try one additional modification. In this case I made it so that the head could rotate inside the handle. I thought that if the handle hit the target that there would be less deflection. The generous distance for footing is about the same as the first modification. The only problem is I can't apply any torque to pull it out of the target. So if I use a small screwdriver and stick it in one of these slots, I can then apply a force and pull it out. Whether we can call this a throwing axe or not, I think is up for debate. I just found it to be an interesting alternative.
Now, I also made a smaller version of it. Once again, the blade inside the handle is able to turn. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and once again, I want to emphasize the need for safety when doing this type of activity. Uh, make sure that you have proper equipment, proper supervision, and know what you're doing. Uh, as always, I want to thank you for watching, and come back and see me again. Bye.